it's Silas for Dino PC, and today we're answering the age-old question, is it worth upgrading? So finally, Intel have released their new 7th generation of CPUs, codenamed KB Lake, and this goes hand in hand with the new chipset release, the uh, Z270 platform. Now we have seen a lot of benchmarks and comparisons floating around online, but something that's a little bit lacking and something that's kind of been glossed over a little bit is actually that the, uh, the new 7th generation Intel CPUs are going to be backwards compatible with the Z170 chipset. So what we really wanted to find out is, say if you're sitting on the 6th gen Skylake CPU platform and you just wanted to kind of upgrade like to like kind of CPUs, would it actually be worth it? Would you notice any performance gains? So although we've seen lots of benchmarks of a 6700K sitting on a Z170 motherboard being compared directly to, say, something like a 7700K sitting on a Z270 motherboard, uh, we haven't actually seen sort of like a, a completely direct apples-to-apples -apples comparison as of yet. So what we elected to do was to grab a Gigabyte Z170X Ultra Gaming motherboard, slap a 6700K in there, run a bunch of be benchmarks, then just simply update the BIOS, swap over the 6700K for a 7700K, and run exactly the same test to see if if say you were running a computer with a Z170 motherboard, would it be worth your while to just update the BIOS and buy a brand new CPU? And would you actually notice any performance benefits? It is worth noting though that your mileage may vary in terms of what BIOSes are available for your current motherboard. So it's always worth going directly to the manufacturer website, having a look and seeing if there is a recent BIOS update that will allow your motherboard to support the new KB Lake CPUs. So even if you have a relatively recent system on that sort of Skylake or Z170 platform and you're considering the upgrade, this review is definitely one for you. So the aforementioned test rig uh, does feature the Gigabyte Z170X Ultra Gaming motherboard. The CPUs, of course, we will be swapping out. Uh, alongside that, we actually have 16 gig of Corsair Vengeance 3000 MHz DDR4 memory, uh, an Intel 750 series 400 gig NVMe PCIe SSD, uh, Corsair RMX 1000 watt uh, power supply to keep the whole thing powered, uh, and to keep everything cool, even when overclocking, we went for a Corsair H110 280mm AIO liquid cooler. Now again, it's worth stressing that literally the only change that we made to this test bench itself was swapping over the CPUs and a simple BIOS update. Everything else remained completely stock. Alongside this, with the AIO cooler, the H110 from Corsair, we did actually run it through Corsair Link on a balanced profile. Uh, the idea being that if you do run it on performance and temperatures are going to be really high, then the noise level is going to get significantly louder. So we kind of wanted to have uh, a good medium, a good sort of balancing point to test not only both temperatures, but also sort of the uh, audible sort of noise coming from the computer. With benchmarking, we wanted to see a direct comparison between the 6700K and the 7700K. So what we actually elected to do was to run a bunch of clock-to-clock -clock kind of overclocks, um, and then also see how far we could push the 7700K. So we ran 4.2 gigahertz, 4.5, 4.7, and then for the 7700K, we also managed to hit five gigahertz with the H110 cooler. Uh, so all the results are gonna be reflective of those overclocks. So we ran Cinebench to check CPU performance. For temperatures, we ran uh, 10 minutes sort of instances of Prime 95, uh, double checking all those temperatures with real temp. Uh, and alongside that, to check the uh, GPU performance or the onboard performance, um, essentially the seventh generation series of Intel CPUs do have, or quite a few of them do have, uh, Intel HD 630 onboard graphics, which is going to be an improvement from the Skylake version. We wanted to see, even say if you weren't running a dedicated GPU, if these new graphics had any kind of potential for gaming. So we did run some benchmark for Tomb Raider as well. And here are the results. For OpenGL, we found that on the Z170 platform, the 6700K would actually outperform, although marginally, the 7700K clock for clock. Only when we boosted the 7700K to 5 gigahertz did we start to see it pull away from the 6700K, but only with the 6700K sitting at just 4.7 gigahertz. The same kind of results can be seen for both single and multi-threaded performance, where those few extra gigahertz points uh, made a difference for the 7700K. Outside of this, with the clock speed the same, the 6700K's results were favorable, but only just. On to temperatures with these overclocks. The temperatures actually revealed the 7700K strength though, as it consistently managed better temperatures at the same clock speed. The low idle temperatures across the board were a given considering the H110's cooling potential. Uh, however, at full load, the 6700K was encroaching on worryingly hot. It is worth noting that Prime 95 is a relatively unrealistic test and you probably wouldn't encounter anything similar in real world performance. Now, the rise of the Tomb Raider benchmark, uh, it is a bit overly complicated, providing three different average FPS scores across across three different environments and then taking an average from those three scores so an average of an average that being said you can see the 7700k and those intel hd 630 uh, onboard graphics pulling ahead ever so slightly but even at 5 gigahertz the 7700k only managed to achieve a maximum fps of 52 frames per second at 720p with low presets so not particularly reliable if you plan on getting a lot 
For onboard video, we weren't really expecting that much, to be honest. It's typically, if you were purchasing an unlocked K-series CPU, especially something like an i7, um, you'd probably be going for dedicated graphics rather than relying on the onboard. However, considering you might be all about productivity, you might have some kids uh, that every now and again want to play some games, then to some degree this is pretty relevant. That being said, performance is nothing to shout about, and we found games like Rise of the Tomb Raider relatively unplayable even at 720p low settings. Uh, less intensive or older games might have some success though. So after all of this, I guess the question still stands, should you run out and go and buy a brand new 7700K? Um, well, maybe. There are quite a few things to consider when considering this kind of an upgrade. Um, essentially, or primarily even, what are you currently running in your system? Have you got a relatively recent system with the 6700K? In which case, the upgrade might not really be worth it. You won't really, as our sort of benchmarks have proved, notice much of a performance increase. That being said though, if you are on something older or your system is a little bit aging, so maybe say running on the, say, Z97 platform, then a new KB Lake CPU is not the worst upgrade path by any means. And if you're looking to buy a brand new system, then really Z270 and new KB Lake CPUs are kind of the best and only option. You probably want to be on the newest platform um, and have the latest and greatest tech, so you'd probably be looking at this seventh generation CPU list. Now something that we kind of have glossed over a little bit in this kind of overview and these benchmarks is of course the Z270 platform. Most of the benchmarks that we have seen do reveal that the 7700K will outperform the 6700K, even just marginally, um, on the Z270 platform rather than Z170. This little overview and comparison though was kind of more from an upgrade perspective, so you have to forgive us for not necessarily going all in and testing everything on Z270 as well as Z170. So you might not necessarily be upgrading for the performance benefits, but how about to get on the new Z270 platform alongside these KB Lake CPUs? So there is some backwards compatibility, as mentioned before, for the Z170 platform, which is great. Um, but let's go into the Z270 platform a little bit more. This was actually designed and developed in tandem with kind of KB Lake CPUs, so uh, there are kind of a few features that might interest you and therefore encourage you to upgrade to this new chipset. So for starters, future upgradability has been covered with the addition of four more PCIe 3.0 lanes, meaning you can utilize more M.2 slots. Uh, say for instance in RAID configurations for even quicker storage, you could go for RAID 0 M.2 drives and you would get really, really quick storage that way. With Z170 there was the continual issue of, uh, say for instance, if A is occupied it will disable B when it came to M.2 and graphics cards. Uh, and with M.2 becoming faster and at the same time more affordable, this could be enough to sway you if you're looking for more super fast storage. The Z270K Lake platform will also allow you to stream Netflix in 4K. However, there is a significant list of requirements including, say, the Edge browser to get you up and running. And I don't think I'm the only one who would just opt for an Android streaming box or say something like an Nvidia Shield, which is now capable of 4K streaming, to get the job done. Equally, it is a bit disappointing to be locked out of such a feature if, say, you bought a computer recently and it's by no means an old platform. Alongside all of this, uh, an interesting one, a new chipset gives manufacturers the opportunity to improve on their current offerings, uh, improving motherboard durability or layout, uh, iode options including adding USB Type-C and Thunderbolt 3 connections. Even the visual appearances can be overhauled uh, of particular boards with new graphics or RGB LED support, which still seems to be a continuing trend. Optane is another word that's being thrown around, which is actually a new Intel memory technology, which essentially can be used by itself or in conjunction with other typical platter drives to speed them up. This is very similar to Intel Smart Response technology, essentially using a smaller solid state storage option for caching alongside a traditional platter hard drive. But uh, if your computer already feels incredibly responsive, your mileage might vary. Now to summarize, should you upgrade your current Skylake CPU, say a 6700K, to a KB Lake 7700K? Probably not, as the performance benefits don't really outweigh the additional cost that you'd be spending on a brand new CPU and then, say for instance, selling off your old second-hand one. Our test results seem to be pretty in line with most of us that we've kind of come across, which does actually show that clock to clock, there's not really any performance to be gained. And again, staying on a Z170 platform, you're probably better off with the 6700K that's kind of installed in your system already. There is very little performance to be gained, and even though the 7700K does have some benefits in terms of temperatures and some overclocking headroom, um, to actually achieve 5 GHz is not the easiest thing. Um, it does kind of require a bit of experience and a bit of know-how to do the overclock and successfully have a stable overclock, and then you've got to kind of deal with the whole silicon lottery of maybe not even getting a chip which is capable of overclocking kind of to, to 5 GHz stably. Should you upgrade to reap the benefits of the more powerful and faster Intel HD onboard 630 series graphics? <laughs> 
probably not. For those looking to buy a completely new system as of today, however, it's a bit of a no-brainer really. The new 7th generation Intel CPUs come in at pretty much exactly the same price point, sort of CPU to CPU, as the older 6th generation CPUs. And although there will be a small increase on price on say something like a Z270 motherboard, maybe around about the sort of 15 to 30% mark, um, it's probably not going to be enough to dissuade you or have you forego the kind of improvements that Z270 does bring to the table. Personally for me, from an upgrade perspective, uh, this new platform doesn't really offer much of a tangible benefit, certainly not enough to justify me going out and sort of buying a brand new CPU and a motherboard. Uh, with something like AMD Zen kind of around the corner coming out sometime later this year, um, it might be worth holding out for that and just seeing how the CPU and the sort of motherboard landscape changes upon its release. So I hope you've enjoyed this little apples to apples comparison of the new kind of KB Lake 7700K CPU. Make sure you like and subscribe this video and also let us know in the comments below, is this something that you're kind of interested in upgrading from say your current Skylake platform to the KB Lake platform or are you going to just forgo all of this anyway and sort of wait until newer CPUs come out in a couple of years time? So leave a comment below to let us know your thoughts and um, what your kind of upgrade path might be. So that's going to be it from me. My name is Silas from Dino PC. Thank you very much for watching and I will catch you in the next one.